What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with a very exciting episode and announcement for Headphones Neil Reviews, and that is a new monthly podcast um, starting today and continuing in 2021, and it is a um, type of show I'm calling Headphones Neil News. It is a new monthly podcast that I'm starting as something that I've been meaning to do for quite some time now and I haven't quite had the time to figure out how I wanted to implement it, but um, with the pandemic going on and um, a couple of things going on and changes in my life that are going on, I figured out a way to get it going and off the ground. So what I'm hoping to do in the coming year is, as I mentioned, do a monthly podcast called Headphones Neil News, which is a recap of a month in um, tech news and media that I'm following. So this stemmed out of my um, missing doing a Android podcast that I used to do. It used to be called the Android Realm. And I would also offer things like quick tips and app reviews and things and Android news um, back, which started around the time when Android first, right around the time Android first came out and I got my first Android smartphone, the Samsung um, Captivate, which was based on the Galaxy S1 line of phones. So that tells you how long I've been using Android. Um, and I retired after a while just because it wasn't really relevant anymore. And I got to thinking that I wanted to do a, a show kind of like that where I share tech news and reviews. And um, recently it came that I, or it came about that I'll be inheriting a laptop. And um, in upgrading the hard drive to a solid state drive, <clears throat> I've been seriously considering whether to continue using Windows or switch over to Linux. And I've been finding that there's a very good case to use Linux over Windows, mostly for the security and stability, and that there's minimal parity as far as my use, um, as far as using Linux versus Windows. Um, so I'll get to that in a little bit, but I figured I would also, or since I already do a film and TV show oh, review podcast, and I already do Android app reviews from time to time already, I would make this podcast just about the news and updates that are of note from the prior month um, and share that. And then I figured that the time frame for the episode may or may not always be particularly long, so I thought I would also include some Star Wars news, being a Star Wars fan, to round it out and have a little bit of a lighthearted ending to each episode. If there's other related news, I would share that as well, so that way... Um, it's kind of like an all-encompassing episode of important news that I like and um, basically take it from there. I anticipate the episodes would be about 20 to 30 minutes long in general, on average, so some could be shorter, some could be longer. And basically just have that kind of monthly recap of news and things that are going on to share. Um, so in general, the episodes will be going out on the public feed so you get it just like any other podcast episode and I have it labeled as um, Headphones Neil News or HNN or something along those lines. Um, but as a benefit for supporting the show via Patreon, I would or I'm currently planning on releasing the show notes so that as a patron you can comment on the post, include your own feedback and things like that prior to the show being re recorded so that way I can include it on that month's episode. If not, that's quite alright as well. I can Once I receive the feedback I can collect them and include them on the following month's episode as well. This is kind of an additional feedback segment for the show. So as I kind of alluded to, the show is going to be divided into three parts. Um, so for this episode, I'm going to run through where I'm at at the moment, or basically as of the recording of the show, and then we'll go forward from there starting next month. So the first segment is going to be on Android um, news and updates. So from my point of view, I'm coming for, or I'm currently using the OnePlus 8 Pro. It's running Android 11. Um, so that's my smartphone of choice, but it's by no means the you know best smartphone for everybody. I happen to like their devices. There's some parts of the update, Android 11 update I don't like, but for the most part, it's a good device. But um, everybody has their preferences, be it the Nexus or the Pixel line of phones, the Galaxy S line, LG, Sony, whatever have you. So no real 
uh, preference as far as um, what phone you use, but from my point of view, I'll be using the OnePlus 8 Pro, so that's kind of where my um, point of view is coming from, but I'll try to keep, or basically the goal is to make that as little of an issue as possible. Um, as far as some of the apps that I use on a regular basis, I use the stock camera and gallery apps at the moment just because they are they work well enough for my needs. I kind of uh, take the point of view here that most people use their default camera and gallery apps, although there are go good alternatives. Um, if you're rooted or you prefer an alternative camera device, I do always recommend Google Camera or a Google Camera mod, but it's always, it's kind of hard as far as finding a good stable version if you're not rooted, so I try not to recommend that too much. Um, I used to recommend a better camera for quite some time, but I noticed the development has fallen off in the past year to year and a half, so I'm not sure if they're working on some major update or if they're no longer working on updates, so if you want a full featured camera app for Android, I, a good alternative is Camera FV5. They recently revamped the app, so it seems pretty good and it gives you a lot of good DSLR features for your Android device. As far as a photo editor, I recommend and use Snapseed. Um, the Google Photos web editor is also pretty good, but with the changes that they're making there as far as storage and all of that, I'll recommend it for a quick and easy backup and editing, but Snapseed is a local option, so that way once you take your picture or want to edit a picture, it is the easier way to go so you, you don't have to rely on your um, internet connection. As far as a music player, with the shutting down of Google Play Music, I'm currently recommending Music Olay. I did recently release an episode recommending Music Olay or VLC Media Player. Both of them are equally good, but for me, I like Music Olay. Just has enough of the features all in one package. Um, I do use the Gap My Gallery app to play videos, so, vi so for the most part, I have no issue playing videos. But if you find that you're playing a lot of videos or prefer a third-party video player, then VLC is the way to go. As far as pod, a podcast client, um, Google Podcast is now pretty good as far as a way to easily jump in to podcasts, adding your and then they recently added the ability to add your own custom RSS feeds. But I find that the navigation is a bit more complex than it needs to be it can be kind of overwhelming if you're even though you're new to podcasts and it's supposed to be for your new or novice users so i still recommend pocket casts it went free i want to say maybe earlier this year or last year but it is a good full featured podcast player that has some good media controls like volume normalization trimming silence syncing with the app and the web player which i think the web player still costs money or has a subscription fee but you can sync across devices um whether it's android or ios so um, you have that and then you can also add custom rss feeds so if you um, listen or you subscribe to podcasts using patreon then it supports that so I definitely recommend Pocket Cast as the way to go. It's the one that I've been using for a good number of years. I've tried a few other ones, but for me, it's the cleanest one to use. Um, there is, or there are open source clients like a ten Antenna Pod, but um, at some point, some of the features start to feel a little basic. But if you want to move out from Google Podcasts, then AntennaPod is probably the slightly easier way to go as far as simplicity of in the UI. But for more features and more of the common features with other podcast clients, Pocket Cast is still the way to go. Um, as far as my home screen launcher, um, the OnePlus launcher is fine, but when they made the change that um, to swipe from the left to right to not all to only have the option for the Google Discover feed and then swiping down is an option between your notifications or their shelf. That kind of turned me off to it. Um, so I have made a more, I've made the more permanent switch to Nova Launcher, which I'll get to a secondary reason as well. But um, the stock launcher I like better without the Google Discover feed just because I have my Google search widget so I would have preferred that option to have the swiping from left to right to be between Google Discover and the shelf. It might be a technological issue or a coding issue for why they can't do that so for now I'm not really recommending that if you're on the one or a OnePlus device so I do recommend one, the Nova launcher just because it has a full set of customization options. Um, that can that may be overwhelming, but it all, is also pretty 
relative or it's relatively easy to use and straightforward because their options are pretty nicely categorized as far as home screen layout, app drawers, icon packs, the UI and all of that. I do use a pro version, but the free version is a good way to jump into that um, if you want to try it out and see if you like it on your device. Um, as far as my actual home screen layout, um, I created a layout on a, a live wallpaper maker called KLWP. It stands for Custom Live Wallpaper Maker. It allows you to create an interactive um, live wallpaper with a variety of different options. So for me, it's, I have a one screen layout with a media player, weather widget, so to speak, is basically the current temperature with a forecast. And then um, it's a variant of what I have linked in the show notes for Patreons, but essentially it's what you see in the screenshot for this episode where it's a weather weather with forecast, a media player, which ties to whatever media you're listening to, whether it's um, music by in Musical Lay or VLC, podcast, YouTube, or whatever else you might have on there. It does require notification access so that you can... Um, uh, so it can pick up on that the track information and the media art, but it has I had set it up with those controls, and then after that I have my top I think five or six notifications. So as they come in, it shows up on my no home screen, just because I find it's cleaner than the Android 11 notification drawer for the OnePlus 8 Pro. And then after that, I have a search widget which ties to the Google app, Quick Search, and um, Google Assistant. The quick search I have installed is tied to the Nova Launcher shortcut for quick search. So that's one of the reasons why I also have Nova Launcher installed is because, or the two reasons I have Nova Launcher installed here is because the quick search shortcut ties to the quick search setting in Nova Launcher. And then custom live wallpaper maker seems to work best for me on or with Nova Launcher. It does work with other launchers, I believe, like um, Action Launcher, maybe a few others, but I haven't tested it in some time just because Nova Launcher seems to be the best one it works with. I know it does not work with the OnePlus Launcher, so that's another reason why I don't use that. But in any case, with the screenshot you see, that's the screenshot I, or that's the layout I'm using. So that way I have quick access to my notifications. The background of each notification is themed to pull the color from the icon of that notification. Um, the media player background changes based on the color or the muted color I think I have it set at because you can do muted or vibrant color based on the cover art. Um, so it pulls from the color from the, in the cover art and changes the color accordingly so a little bit of customization there but that's a little bit more on, probably more on the advanced side for now, but it's a layout that I've set up for myself and currently like just because it's easy to use. And then I have my top uh, seven icons that are for app shortcuts that I use, so I have that set up there. But um, that's kind of where I'm coming from. So if you have any questions or want me to elaborate further on the next episode for any of these items, I can definitely do that, or even do a special app review. Um, to or in screencast to share kind of some of my favorite things or walk you walk around um the various features of the apps that i've mentioned so um you can see what i'm looking at and i can elaborate on those various features um so on a related note um to promote my youtube channel all my screencasts and app reviews and um gameplay videos and all that show up on the youtube channel at youtube.com slash patel n01 so um, if you guys ever want to check those out and see that it's they're available there, um, this, av- this episode w- is also will also be available for streaming on the YouTube channel once posted. So um, if you do use YouTube for your podcast streaming, then that is also an option for you. Um, so with that being said, I'm gonna the next segment of the um, each month's episode will be Linux news. So uh, major developments, changings, updates, news, and things like that that show up. So this may or may not be a very extensive segment, but it's going to also include anything that I've been doing on a personal level with Linux for the prior month. So as I mentioned, I'm currently, I currently I recently inherited a laptop, so I'll be upgrading the hard drive to a SSD or solid state drive. So I'm currently um, considering which version of Linux to install on it. 
Um, so it's a matter of the UI that I that I prefer. So I'm kind of le I'm leaning between three variants variants right now. Um, Ubuntu Budgie, Lubuntu, which is a variant of Ubuntu that is that kind of looks like the Linux version of uh, let's say Windows Seven or so, and then Debian, which is the base version of Apple's operating system and a more clean base version of Linux. Um, in that in that in the Debian version, I was thinking about using the Cinnamon desktop, which is kind of a dark version of Windows Seven, or maybe even a, or kind of comparable to Windows Ten, but on in a Linux UI. So um, the reason I like those is just because the UI looks good, the support is good, and overall features for a laptop seem to like they would work out the best. Um, I'm currently more leaning towards Debian just because most other Linux variants are based on it. And it seems like it's, or based on reviews that I've been reading, it's the more stable version of all Linux. Other versions use the more uh, frequently updated version or the more testing version, so there could be more bugs implemented. Debian, the Debian release I'm looking at focuses more on um, stability, bug fixes, and things like that. So that's where I'm going into the end with that. Um, once I set it up, the current plan is to, or the main things to look at are to install Google Chrome. It is a manual installation because it is not open source, so it's not a good or bad thing here in any case, but um, it is something that I would ins be installing because it's the browser of choice that I use. Um, and then as far as gaming goes, I'm not a big gamer, but I'm currently looking at using Stadia or Steam. With Stadia, it seems like the easiest way to go just because um, it does require, or it would require Chrome to be installed and hardware um, acceleration to be um, enabled. So once that's done, I was thinking about giving it a shot for a month or so and trying out a game or two just to see how it works, see if it does work and um, how it plays from there. And also, I found out what Right when I was record, right before recording this episode, is it it supports live streaming to YouTube, so it might be an extra gaming feature to try out there. Um, and then with Steam, it does require a few extra steps, notably with drivers, um, th um, extra um, packages to be installed besides the Steam package, especially. But it does seem to support Debian, so if Stadia doesn't really work or it doesn't pan out with using that as the gaming platform of choice, then um, I'll try installing Steam, see how that goes, see if I can get it running, and see if that works any better. Um, so that's all there is for that. That's kind of where I'm going with that. And then as games are played or news are, is updated, then um, each month we'll have a segment on that. And then finally, with the Star Wars segment, um, because we're in a golden era, so to speak, of Star Wars news and content, TV shows and all of that, um, I figure I'll share a month-to-month -month update there, especially with new TV shows coming out soon. So as news comes up and there's things up to share there, then I'll include um, news and updates and segments on that. Um, so for this particular segment, just to catch up with what happened with the recent Disney call and recent news. So if you're a fan of the old video game Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 The Sith Lords, it recently released on December 18th for Android and iOS. So um, it is, I think, $14.99, so a bit on the premium side, but the game has enough content to make it worth it. So definitely worth checking out. I've started playing the game, um, and I've started sharing the... Um, gameplay videos to the YouTube channel, again, youtube.com slash PatelN01. So if you're interested in following my progress there, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you get notified as I make those videos available. Um, they should mostly be available in up to 4K resolution. Um, every so often it goes only up to 1080p for some reason, but it might just be a timing issue for the conversion. But in any case, it is, they should all be at least at 1080p resolution or higher to watch the gameplay. So definitely check those out. Um, also on the Disney call, um, we got news for a few, few new TV shows coming soon. Notably Star Wars Andor um, coming for the dark, it looks like the dark side of the rebel of building a rebellion. And the backstory for Cassie and Andor coming, which is coming in 2022. We got a teaser trailer for Rogue Squadron, which will be directed by Patty Jenkins. It looks like um, Top Gun with X-Wings, most likely, so 
Um, it was really more of a vignette of um, Patty Jenkins's love of fighter jets and her father's time in service, so that should be good there. Um, coming on January 4th, 2021 is going to be a live stream of the High Republic, so we're going to get some announcements for upcoming projects and more information on the authors behind the novel, so a little bit more information coming soon there. And then coming in the future is going to be a Clone Wars spinoff series called The Bad Batch based on Clone Force 99, so um, not too much information there. We did get a teaser trailer, which was also another vignette. So I'm kind of curious to see what they do there. It feels like maybe a Mandalorian series where they do a um, kind of just like episode by episode mission style thing with the Bad Batch. Um, and then with the Kenobi series coming soon, I want to say that it's coming. The sh filming is completed or the filming has started. I kind of forget where they went with that, but it's going to start in Q1 of 2021. But they announced that it's going to star Hayden Christensen as Darth Vader. So we're going to see how that pans itself out, whether he's only in the suit or we're going to have him acting in flashbacks with um, Ewan McGregor as Kenobi. And finally, we have The Mandalorian Season 3 announced to release in December of 2021. So, and I, said, I think I said Season 3, but Season 3 is expected to release in December 2021. And this is going to be separate from what we saw at the end of Season 2 with the announcement of another um, series called The Book of Boba Fett, which is also coming in December of 2021, but is a, from what current all intents and purposes it's supposed to be a separate show but we'll see if that's just a misdirection and it's going to be part of the same show or if it is actually a separate like mini series style show or a full-on multi-season arc um, revolving around Boba Fett and where he was maybe after Return of the Jedi or just um, if it's something that's more expansive of his life after um, the Clone Wars or something like that so we'll see how all of that pans out. So that's really all there is for this particular episode and review. Quite a lot to go through. So as I mentioned, um, there will be... So the episode is going to come out once a month. Um, so the next one is scheduled to come out in the second half of, 20, of January 2021. Um, with the similar format, Android news, Linux news, and Star Wars news. So whatever is gathered by then will be included. As a patron, um, I'm currently expecting probably a few days to a week or so at least prior to the episode being recorded and released. I'll have the show notes and I'll post up for patrons so that if you want to provide your feedback and um, input or comments or news or anything you want to share, then um, you can share it there and I'll include it with the episode. But as I mentioned on the flip side, no worries if you can't. It can also be included with the following month's episode so that's all there is for this so if you want to get in touch with me you can find me on twitter at patel n01 for feedback comments suggestions dms for your feedback and all of that um, you can find the website at patel n01.com for um, all episodes subscription links supporting the show which does have a link to the patreon and all of that good stuff but thanks for tuning in and until next time